Welcome back. I'm Brandon, the HBAR Bull. And as many of you know, I do some work for the HBAR Foundation. Today, we have Mei Chan, the CEO of one of the most used applications in the Hedera ecosystem, the Hashpack Wallet. Mei, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. It's good to be here. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to what we get into. Uh, to kick it off, May, uh, what initially brought you into the Web3 space? Uh, that's a bit embarrassing because uh, I had a friend back in 2021 at the beginning of 2021 who um, introduced me to this cryptocurrency called Hoge, which is Dogecoin, except with a pit bull. No, sorry, a bulldog. And uh, it was very meme -y. And he was like, this is going to be the next big thing. And uh, so I, I aped in and that was my introduction to crypto. Hey, that's fine. However, we got you here. We're happy with what you're doing now. So with that, can you pretty much just tell us about Hashpack and what drove you to build it? Yeah. So after Hoge, after the, the, the clown world of that, I started looking into other cryptos. I found Chainlink. I found um, GRT, which I mm -hmm. really liked. Um, and then eventually I stumbled on Hedera and Hedera was really neat because uh, as an engineer, as my like professional background, I really wanted to find something that was like solid on the technical level, mm -hmm. on the platform level. And Hedera really looked like a, a very well thought out and robust system. So I got in, I started researching on it. I saw the, uh, the interview with Lehman at uh, Harvard, was it, or Oxford? Mm -hmm. Harvard, yeah. Harvard, yep. And that one really sold me. So um, so at that point, I became an H-Barbarian, and I found a Discord group called Club H-Bar. And uh, when I went there, everyone was really friendly. We started talking, and then I started playing around with the Hedera SDK. And at some point, I was just like, well, does anyone want to make something on Hedera? It doesn't really matter what. And a bunch of people raised their hands. And so then we got to brainstorming what we wanted to make. And we eventually came to the conclusion that we were missing a really good wallet on the ecosystem. So we started building that. And about we had, we had like 10 people raise their hands at the beginning. And then after about two weeks, there were only four of us left. And that became the founding team of Hashpack. There is different people that had different skills. So there are some people that had like media skills and advertising skills, and we weren't at that point yet. And actually they, the, the people I'm thinking about have specifically gone on to do great things in the mm -hmm. ecosystem as well themselves. Okay. So, so like all the people who are, are, who are interested in the beginning are still in the ecosystem, still doing things. So it's, it's actually a, a very cool community that we have. Um, but yeah, we, we started building this app and it turns out that uh, everyone who stayed on board is like a veteran in their mm -hmm. role. So like everyone has uh, 10 years of experience or more in their, in their work. Um, I come from a professional engineering background. So I have a lot of project management and relationship management experience. So I ended up uh, becoming the business development side of, of the team. Then there's Jacob who is a lead designer at his company. And um, well, not his company, but where he works. And he does all the UX, uh, UI stuff for the for Hashpack as well, some marketing stuff. Um, and then we have Tyler and Nick, who are both lead developers on their teams. And Tyler is now full time on Hashpack with me. And uh, we're just continuing to go forward. Well, we're really impressed with the, the end result. You guys are doing a great job. So and I'm really not sure how exactly does the business model for a crypto wallet work? So wallets are a very interesting case. We don't sell our wallet to anyone. We don't have like a product that is bought or licensed or, or um, have a subscription model or anything like that. Um, we're the interface for the network. So when you wanna do something very basic on the network, like sending HBAR or viewing your NFTs or something, we don't wanna charge for that, right? So we can't charge for like the most simple things. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening for the business model for a wallet is that you charge for additional features above and beyond the basic um, service. And they're basically convenience features, right? Mm -hmm. um, so buying HBAR or USDC in your wallet is a convenience because you could go to another platform and get a, a good deal for that there, but then you'd have to 
do all the sign up there and then you have to send it over to your wallet. If you do it directly in wallet, then we take a small amount uh, mm -hmm. for the convenience. We also have something called secure trade, which allows you to atomically swap um, your HBAR for NFTs. And that is something that is really useful for sellers of NFTs that want to do one-on-one -on -one trades because you don't have to trust that the person is going to send you HBAR and you, the person that is buying doesn't have to trust that that when you when they send you the H bar, there you're going to get back an NFT, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an additional service, and we charge a small amount on top of that as well. So things like that. Um, the biggest one here will be swapping. When that comes live on the network, then we'll try to integrate in wallet swapping, and that will also be a good revenue source for us. Okay, well, thanks for clearing that up. So Stater HBAR staking has been one of the most popular products supported by the HBAR Foundation, and Hashpack was integral to that success. Can you just tell us about that integration and launch? Sure. Actually, Stater built all of that stuff on their back end without, um, without us even knowing uh, all of the integrations and that kind of thing. Uh, so it was sort of one of those things that Lehman used to say back in his videos where we don't even know what people are building on Hedera. And so Stater kind of came out of left field. And the way that we found out about them was through an introduction from the HBAR Foundation. And they are just saying that, you know, Stater has some questions about the integration. Can you have a look? And then we go in and they basically had it all figured out except for a few, a few small things. Um, Stater was one of the very first smart contract uh, supported dApps that we that we worked with, and um, we had to do a bit of tweaking and a, a bit of development work to support smart contracts. And so Cedar was actually really great at uh, at uh, flattening out those bugs and 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 working through those uh, those issues. And uh, the product came out smoothly. It was a very very smooth launch. Um, we had like a million H bar. Oh, I can't remember the, the numbers now, but like something insane in the in the first yeah. in the first hour, and everything just worked very smoothly. And that's like just as much on the Stater team as it as it is on like the our team. Um, Stater did a great job, and their team is very solid. So we're very happy to continue working with them. Yeah, they did a great job. I think, and I don't quote me on this, but I think it was 10,000 uh, HBAR transactions or calls to that uh, smart contract within the first hour. So it was really impressive. Yeah. So um, the other thing is, I think we're going to be posting this video right before a Stater AMA. So if you're watching this and it's before 9 a.m. on Friday, July 8th, go check out the Stater AMA on Twitter and you can get any questions you want answered on there. So um, Banksa, which is another AMA we just did recently, is another platform that you're working with. How's Hashpack integrating with them? Banksa is a great team. Um, they're extremely responsive. I actually got to meet them in uh, Austin for Consensus 2022. And uh, Banksa, they are a, uh, a fiat on-ramp and soon to be off-ramp. I'm not sure if I was supposed to say that. Um, but basically, we use them to help users buy HBAR and USDC on Hashback. And so right now, if you go into Hashpack and you press the buy button, there is an option to purchase with Banksa. And Banksa has a few great uh, benefits. They're available worldwide. They have um, a very responsive development team. So everything that we do with them, if there's any sort of bugs or anything like that, they're, they're pretty quick with fixing them. And they have a few features that are coming up that maybe they answered in their AMA, but uh, I don't want to spoil it for them. So yeah, we're very excited to work with them. And uh, it's it's been great so far. I do think you're safe talking about the um, off-ramp. They did mention the fiat off-ramp, so I think awesome. you're safe there. <laughs> so we just had uh, NFT NYC a couple weeks ago, and Hedera made a pretty big splash. What are your thoughts on the Hedera NFT ecosystem? I think the NFT ecosystem is like a, a very good example of what makes Hedera special from the community side. I think that... Uh, you know, when you look at other chains, there's a lot of like, a lot of shilling, a lot of people that are trying to just like sell their 10,000 NFT collection and, and make a buck. And then when I talk to NFT creators on Hedera, um, they're all just very passionate about what they're doing and, and their art. And, and also they're very inclusive. So whenever a new NFT 
uh, project comes on board, everyone like welcomes them in. They get mm -hmm. they get cross promoted. They do collaborations with each other. Um, it's it's just a really fun space, and I'm I'm so glad that we have this kind of like community fostered um, here on Hedera. It's great. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The NFT crowd in the space is doing a fantastic job. So Hashpack is obviously an invaluable piece of infrastructure for the HBAR economy. What are some of the other pieces that are still missing in your opinion? So there's um, there's some very basic pieces of DeFi that we are still looking for, but that are coming up really soon. The biggest one is swaps, right? Swaps and DEXs. Um, which will come up, I think, in this summer. We have Saucer Swap just imminently ready to launch. And I think there's like five or six other DEXs that are that have announced that they are building on Hedera and they're coming out and and such. So like we'll see that there's also Tangent that is live. And Tangent is a very interesting model because they're they started without smart contracts. Um, and so I think that that caused a bit of um uh of hesitation in the community but so mm -hmm. far they've been doing pretty good and i don't i haven't heard anything awful about them um so uh, so like we're we're starting to see DeFi start to come to hedera and that's really good um once swaps kick in then you have bridges that are very important to bring liquidity in from other chains and hashport already exists and hashport is doing a great job and is having, I think they're gonna have some big announcements coming up soon. So Hashford is great. Um, and I think that once things kick off, we're gonna see other bridges try to come in and, and you know, take up that space um, and we'll see how that works. Uh, there are some big cross-chain bridges um, that exist that are already compatible with all the other big chains. And you know, if they set their eyes on Hedera, then who knows how much, how much value they can bring into the ecosystem. Um, another big one would be staking. We have Stater for liquid staking. And uh, I think that when swaps come in, they're going to have their own liquidity pools that you can stake to. Um, that's going to be a big one to like bring in value, like TVL, total value locked into the ecosystem. Um, and then from there, there's just other pieces that you can just start building on and start really driving the, the economy on Hedera, and I, like such as lending and borrowing. Um, and, and other things. Those are the basic pieces of DeFi that I see. Another piece of infrastructure that is kind of a little bit more nebulous that I think is missing are focus groups. Um, and these are starting to be built where people are starting to make focus groups where similar projects and developers can come together and collaborate. Um, and I think that this is very important. It's similar to the NFT space where uh, all of the NFT people come together and collaborate, work together, build out a market, build out um, a, a community where people can come in and buy and sell and that kind of thing. Well, the same thing needs to happen with swaps where all the swaps get together and talk to each other and all the wallets get together and talk to each other, you know, um, focus groups where people can come together and talk about the issues and then Find a, uh, find a solution and make the platform even better. And this exists in a lot of professional fields um, where even if you're a competitor, you still have benefits to work together. And I think that this is something that we're starting to see on Hedera and I'm really excited to um, drive and, and you know, uh, make, some, make it big on Hedera, so. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's becoming a, a really thriving ecosystem. And and what's more is all the pieces that you were talking about are actually coming to fruition. It's not just pie in the sky stuff. These are things that are actually going to be coming to to market in the very near future. So it's really exciting. So what's next for you and the Hashpack team? Well, uh, we have a big one, which is native staking. Native staking on Hedera, which has been like a pie in the sky for such a long time, and and now it's just actually being implemented. Um, so our our team is working very closely with Hedera, or rather, Swirls is now the uh, what they're called since they migrated out of Hedera. Um, mm -hmm. So Swirls is is getting ready to launch that at the end of July, I think. So we're we're looking to be ready with in wallet staking from day one of that. Um, and we'll see how that turns out. It's still like not um, totally up in the air because everybody's developing, but that's that's going to be a big one. Another one is once saucer swap comes out and other swaps come out, we want to find some partners to do some in wallet swaps. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a, a great thing for 
um, for users from the user experience perspective, because you could go to software swap um, and, and swap your coins there. And, and that's, that's fun. Uh, but if like, I think that users find a lot of comfort in doing it in their wallet and a lot of convenience in doing it in their wallet. Um, so that is going to be a big one for us. Uh, the other one is mobile apps. Right now, Hashpack is a web app, and it also is a Google Chrome extension. And we worked really good on mobile as well. You can load it up on Chrome on your devices, but we're building out Android apps and eventually iOS apps. Uh, and that's going to be a big one on our, our roadmap as well. Um, another one that is not really sure where this is going to go, but um, gaming on Hedera is huge. I, yeah. they, you know, a whole bunch of companies have just launched, like, and and uh, and and joined the community and and showed that they're building games on Hedera. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the next big thing in crypto overall. So it's great to see that interest in Hedera. Um, and so, you know, I'm talking with a bunch of people. I'm going to be on a Spaces this afternoon with okay. Lithos. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, that's the AAA uh, gaming studio that has announced that they are going to try to build things on Hedera as well. Um, and so, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But I think that in the next, you know, six months to a year, we're going to see a lot of of progress on games on Hedera and, and, and you know, what that's going to look like. And, uh, and that's probably going to drive the gaming industry for it too as well. And we'll see what that looks like, but very exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about Lithos. It'll actually probably be yesterday by the time we get this posted, but um, you can take a look at um, Hello Future Buzz, and hopefully she has a recording of that Lithos uh, AMA. Uh, and I'm going to try to get Lithos and their entire team, as well as um, Alex, as well from the HBAR Foundation, on to talk us through what they're actually building. But yeah, it, that one's exciting. Vavil's exciting. Uh, Reality Plus, and of course, we got Ubisoft. So gaming is certainly exploding in the Hedera space and uh, I know you mentioned a lot of the DeFi players uh, tangent and uh, saucer swap I don't want to leave ever, anybody out so I know we have H bar suite that is also working in this space so all exciting stuff coming down the road so may if you had one request from the Hedera community what would it be so as we see more interest coming into Hedera uh, we're going to see a large influx of users right from other chains and from people who are just curious about crypto and have decided to come onto Hedera as their first platform. And we have a great community on Hedera. We have a great culture here. And I want to keep that strong. And when you have a, a group of like of people that are like really great, and then you have a huge crowd that comes in, there's a chance for that culture to be diluted. Mm -hmm. And so as a community, what I think we should do is we should be ready for this and we should welcome them in. We should foster that same welcoming community that we have um, and get people to become, you know, just as sharing, just as generous um, and, and, and kind of keep away the, the, the sort of like the, the degenerate sort of moonshot kind of culture tribal, that, sure. you know, tribal culture. Yeah all of that and just like bring people in and, and just, you know, celebrate our similarities, celebrate our differences. Um, I, I think that Hedera is great in that it, the community tends to be less tribal than other coins. Like, yeah, sure. We love Hedera. We love HBAR, but we also recognize the other chains and we look at the other chains in a very like critical manner. Um, and we say like, well, what are the good things about this chain? What are the bad mm -hmm. things? And um, I think that when people come in, you know, we just treat them with that same respect and we mm -hmm. don't just like, I don't know, um, act exclusive. Uh, mm -hmm. And this community is great for that. So I think as a community, if we just keep pushing that forward, I think we can continue to make Hedera a great place to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great message. We want to keep a big, big tent. We want to uh, make sure that we stay as inclusive as possible with all the people coming in. And like you said, there's a lot of good things with other change and that uh, other chains. And that's what uh, Hashport is all about. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, whether it's Ethereum with their their deep um, developer pools or their secondary markets and things like that, we can leverage each other for our own strengths, right? All right. So the last thing, I just want to give you an opportunity, if you have any final thoughts uh, that you want to pass on to the community. Yeah, um, I think 
that Hitter is a great ecosystem um, for all of the reasons that have been stated before. I think if you're looking to get involved, you know, you're, you're on the fence, you should just jump in, you know, find some people, make something, you know, maybe one day you'll be the top wallet on the space um, or, or other kind of application, right? You never know. And it's just great fun to start, start, start tinkering. Um, and even if you're not a developer or an artist or creative anyway, you know, getting involved in those communities and just like jumping in and, and, and participating. Um, one of the great things about Hashpack is our community as well, where people come in and tell us what they love about the wallet and what they hate about the wallet and what they wish that could be introduced into the wallet. And uh, we take all of the, that feedback and we try to do our best to, um, to, to cater to what our users need, right? And, and the same goes with all the other all the other platforms, you know, Stater and Saucer and everything like that. Like we all want to build a great community. Um, the other thing is that uh, if you're listening and you're new to Hedera, um, check out Hashpack, hashpack.app. Um, and, you know, you'll see that uh, there's a really great experience that we can have here with like the NFT marketplaces that exist and all of the other, all of the other use cases that are going to come up. So, um, dive in and, and get your feet wet and see what see what's out there. It's great. Mate, you have had some great insights. I've been super impressed with everything you've built to this point. And if you continue on the same trajectory, I know we have exciting things to look forward to in the future. So thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thanks very much.